Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and Agenda Setting Meeting for October 3rd, 2019. It is approximately 7.03 p.m. If we'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All members of council are in attendance this evening. Uh, before we get into our uh, Citizens Night, our comment period, just a brief announcement, something we've been talking about for a little bit. The, uh, the flooding that occurred in the Logan's Ferry area, there's a few other regions, and there was a meeting that is going to be scheduled. Just want to let you know that uh, the residents of those areas, we are still scheduling this meeting. Uh, these things take uh, more time than what they should, but we're waiting some, for some feedback from some state agencies. Our engineering department has been working on it. Our outside engineering department has been working on some scenarios as well. And we just want to make sure we're gathering all this information before we have this meeting. Uh, Mr. Harvey has been working pretty hard on this. And I uh, just want to let everybody know, all those residents, that the meeting is going to happen. Everyone will be notified before that meeting does occur. And uh, we'll get that scheduled as soon as possible. So I just want to let everybody know where that stood. We're going to move to our Citizens Night comments. This is your time in the municipality to address council. This is a comment period. Uh, we always ask for a five-minute time limit on your comments. We feel that's an, an efficient time for you to get your point across. I will indicate to you whenever you have one minute left, and then we ask that you wrap up your comments at that point. This is your chance to speak about any municipal item. Uh, at our voting meeting on uh, next Tuesday, the 8th, you will have another opportunity to address council prior to any vote on the agenda items. At the end of that same meeting, you would have another opportunity to speak about any municipal item. So just to clarify, tonight is not a voting meeting. There are no votes that are taken this evening, no action that is taken by council. This is your chance to be to address council and to comment. And it's also council's uh, chance to set the agenda and make sure everything's ready for Tuesday when we do vote on the 8th. Okay? The, if there's any questions during your comment period, or even during the comments as well, I ask council just to, not to please get in any debates and please let any, all the residents get all their comments across. Uh, if there are any questions that we are able to answer, we will do so at the end of the comment period. That's a way to kind of get the meeting moving, moving forward in an efficient manner. Okay? So uh, if anyone has signed in, I'm not sure if anyone has. Nicole has, she knows that, and she's coming up. So Nicole can go first. And you certainly will have an opportunity to sign in at any time. I will give people plenty of notice and, and opportunities to speak this evening. So if you didn't sign in yet, don't rush and don't worry about it. You'll have a chance if you want to speak or if you change your mind and you want to speak later. So Nicole Henline, uh, I'm sorry, if you just state your name for the record. Nicole Henline, um, Director and Resident of, of the Library and Resident of Monroeville. Um, as always, thank you for your support of the library. And I would like to thank all community members who donated or attended fundraisers in the month of September. It was part of the prorated match from the Buncher Foundation, and it was a wonderful month. We had 73 people at Trivia Night that the Friends organized, um, so we're very excited about that. A few things coming up. Author and Pitt School of Law librarian Linda T Tashbook will talk about her book, Family Guide to Mental Illness and the Law. Saturday, October 19th, the Garden Club of Monroeville and Boyce Park Naturalist will show us how to save and store seeds from flowers, herbs, and vegetables. And for the whole family, our sixth annual star party will be held Saturday, October 12th from 7 to 9, and that's at Beechwood Park, and there is a rain date, so make sure to call the library to double check that it's happening on that date and not the rain date. Um, we're having a tween Halloween party on October 18th. Trick or Treat at the library, October 31st from 4 to 8. And look for us at several community Halloween celebrations, including Trail, or Trail of Treats, Halloween at the Mall, and Crossroads Trunk or Treat. Um, and we're looking forward to new programs and classes in the Makerspace this November. So stay tuned for more information on that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. <coughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. David Mintz. All right, good evening, David Mintz, resident of Monroeville. Hi, 
Um, I have several things to talk about. Um, my first one was um, a couple days ago, uh, Mr. Little and I spoke on the phone. Uh, I was just calling him to uh, get an update on any progress on the uh, updated gas and oil ordinance that uh, we submitted uh, last month. It's been a month. And um, I think it's pretty important. I just wanted to ask from our conversation, um, my understanding is that uh, there was no work or progress or no staff work looking at or working on the ordinance we turned in. And um, when I say staff, from when would we talk to that, that would be Mr. Little, Mr. Ratcher, of course, uh, Mr. Weldon and Mr. Hugis uh, from, from our conversation. And in order for that to progress, in order for that to start, my, we, we had a, a conversation about it, is that there would have to be a as it was described to me by Mr. Little, an informal consensus from the council um, for Mr. Little to begin his staff to work on it, to look at it. Um, I never quite, I don't think we ever quite, it sounds, because it's informal, is there, I, you know, it, does it need to be one person that's championing it? it does it need, need to be the mayor plus a certain number of <coughs> council people? Does it need to be four out of seven? There was no, it just an informal consensus. So I guess my first request would be, um, as we spoke about it, Mr. Little, I mean, when I asked, you know, is there any progress and how long do you think, you know, the whole thing might take? And, and the fact that it hasn't been started means that, as Mr. Little told me, it said, well, it could take three months or it could take three years. Now, we've been talking about this for several years, as you know, me coming up every month for, for most of that time. Um, so I'd hate to see it, you know, go out for three years. Um, but I know that was just a, you know, <coughs> um, but I guess what I'm asking, first of all, is could, is, is there anybody on council that will champion this, uh, including including the Mr. You know, Mr. Mayor? Um, could somebody, one, two, three, four, all the way up to all seven of you plus the mayor, talk to Mr. Little and say, well, I think this is important enough for the staff, the four people that I mentioned, including Mr. Little, to start looking at this, uh, <laughs> going over it, having questions about it. I, my understanding is you have to look at it, and then you have to do that, and then it goes to the Planning Commission, then it comes back to the council, but right now it's just sitting there. It's not, nothing's happening yet because council hasn't given the informal <coughs> consensus to, to start. So my first question is, would, would that please start? Or could somebody do that? Give Mr. Little the idea that, or, you know, that it's important enough that we should be working on that. <coughs> I guess that's my first point, and I guess you, you answer after I'm done with both my points kind of thing, right? Okay. Um, my second point uh, is actually on the pool issue. Um, Actually, I just had two points to make on that because uh, we, I, I also spoke to Mr. Little briefly about it. And after we spoke, I did get access to um, a 97-page document that was um, released with a lot of letters and information um, uh, based on a right to know request about, about the poll. And I just wanted to make two points from when I read through all these pages. Um, and I'm sure everybody in the council knows this, but I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to say a few things for everybody in the audience. One was from a letter uh, May 15th of 2018 to Mr. Little from uh, John Romano, uh, the right-of-way administrator for the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And in that letter, he, he stresses, it says, please note that your property has not been condemned and you and or your tenants are not required to move from the premises. But of course, that was May 15th of 2018. I just wanted to point that out. And one other thing I just wanted to point out on page 40 of the 97 pages that I thought was interesting, um, just on the immediacy of what has to be done with the pool issue. Uh, whether it needs to be voted on, you know, uh, in, in the upcoming Tuesday meeting. Um, I understand that Monroeville, according to these letters, did request uh, the Turnpike, Turnpike Commission that if Monroeville did sell the, the land, if, if Monroeville could lease it back for one dollar a year in 2019 and 2020, but the Turnpike Commission turned that down because of potential liabilities they didn't want to take on. And I understand that. But uh, they also mentioned in the same letter, and I'm talking about a letter from Tuesday, November 20th, 2018, uh, this was to Mr. Little uh, from Charles Brannigan. Um, he is the consultant project manager of the Interstate Acquisition Services, a division of Century Engineers, Inc. Um, the other point he made in this letter was that if Monroeville did decide to operate, one minute, okay. Less hand. All right. Uh, the pool in 2019, as we did, they would still, uh, the offer that they're making, the, the amount of money would still be you know, valid, as we all know. Um, but if, the, if Monroeville did decide to run the pool in 2020, it says, should the municipality desire to continue operation of the pool through 2020, the Turnpike Commission will re reserve the right to determine if the current valuation is still reflective of the condition of the pool at the end of 2020. This may result in a revised appraisal report and offer. And I understand that's what's been referenced, that if it's sold after 
if it's sold after uh, the end of this year, that, you, that Minerva Rifle might get less money because the pool has been used and the equipment's been used. I'm not sure if they ever intend on reusing that material or if it's just an idea of how much they should pay us because the material has depreciation on it, that kind of thing. But to me, the point there is that they obviously <coughs> don't need the pool yet in 2020. And if the representatives of the pool feel, it, I, I, I kind of leave it up to them. If they feel uh, that it's important enough to run the pool at least one more year with through Monroeville and possibly have less money, maybe they can make that point or what they think about that to Monroeville. But I just want to make it clear that it's not like they condemned it and want to take it right now. <coughs> it's just they might give a little bit less money based on depreciation. So thank you. So those are my two points. Um, thank you, David. OK. Well. I'll stop talking, but is there any? That's it. It's why you five minutes. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, can somebody answer my? Let's get through all the comments, and if they, we can answer questions, we'll do so at the end of the comment period. Oh, of everybody's comments. We have people here. Yeah, I want to get everybody to get yeah. their comments into the record. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And I don't have anyone in front of me as far as sign up. If someone else would like to address council on any municipal item, sir, if you could just sign in. And then state your name for the record, please. My name is Bob Williams. I am a Mineralville resident. And Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager, ladies and gentlemen and council, I want to address uh, item number four on your agenda, an ordinance of municipality of Mineralville amended ordinance number 2329 to eliminate imprisonment as a penalty for non-payment of business taxes or other violations of the provision of ordinance number 2329. My question is, why would we want to take the teeth out of the law? You know, uh, these people that uh, uh, don't want to pay their business privilege tax, that seems like an imprisonment would be the last resort in, in a good way to cause them uh, to come forward and pay their taxes to keep from being in prison. So uh, that's the only thing I wanted to address. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Anyone else like to address council? I have okay. a question first before my time starts. If you could just and state your name for the record. Yes, I'm Barbara Spann. I'm Miles Spann's daughter. Uh, as many of you know, and you're a Monroeville uh, resident. I am a, a Monroeville uh, Fourth Ward homeowner and uh, resident. Welcome. Part time resident. Thank you. Um, uh, but my question before my time starts is if you put something down for the camera, where do I put it? Actually, on? where your right, laptop where is? Where your laptop is. There's a <laughs> sticker, right? There's a little X see with the tape. X? I do see the X. Is this off to go? Oh, I see. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, some as, you, as some of you know, former Councilman Miles Spann died in these very council chambers a number of years ago. Uh, it's true, though, prior to that, he was responsible for securing the private grants to originally operate and make capital improvements for Bel Air, the pool, the park, the recreation center. And as he always said, it's for the kids. Says you can see with everything uh, I've put down here, decades of support. I'm the one in the picture. Bulldog Span gets his way. Kids get the pool. This was intended for the community. In a letter to the Turnpike Commission in 2018, though, you stated you wanted to memorialize, uh, memorialize Bel Air. You did, Mr. Little, I, I uh, believe, and memorializing it is a good place to start. Miles Spann personally secured hundreds of thousands of dollars in private and nonprofit grants through the Scape Foundation and others uh, for the better men of Monroeville's <laughs> family and children. In today's market, these pro this privately generated funding would have a value of $1.7 to $2 million. That is no small change in support of Monroeville that he uh, alone acquired. And uh, alignment with the mission of the donors, uh, with the donors and foundations, it supported programs like Camp Chippewa, Midget Football. It purchased the Jaws of Life, which is used by the fire department to pry open cars in accidents, saving lives every day. And the grants were catalyzed, or the uh, catalyst for the first outdoor public uh, skating rink, which was in Monroeville Park, I understand, since taken out. 
um, and for the Senior Citizen Center, for many of our parks, and of course, Bel Air. Don't just take my word for it. Here are some quotes. Few of us who know Mary Lou and Miles Spann know that besides foundation money, they've given thousands of their own money to the needy in Monroeville programs. Miles is a man who's helped people his whole life. That's from Jack Spielman. The Spans are concerned about meeting and supporting needs that serve the interests of Monroeville residents, especially his efforts with the Scape Foundation. That's from Marshall Bond. Miles Spann gained nothing from this. His name is on nothing. No streets, no parks, not even Bel Air. But still, like, uh, like anything where money comes into the municipality, it wasn't without controversy. There was a lot of argument over when and where and in what ward it should be spent despite the original intent of the donors. And that's not unlike the controversy that's happening with Bel Air today. So when this controversy first came out, I looked into the facts. The fact is the Turnpike Commission provided preliminary engineering maps on the expansion, and this is the one to which I'm specifically referring, in 2015, that was four years ago. Now, I know that some of you, you mentioned, Mr. Harvey, that uh, you've gone, that you uh, all have a close working relationship, that there are meetings regularly held with uh, municipal officials in our municipality and others. You've gone to uh, every one uh, of those, and at each one they have colored overhead uh, pictorials with uh, colored lines that show the affected areas. Five citizens filed right to know requests under the law with the municipality to get copies of the information since 2015, including these maps, yet providing those maps was refused. Also, two and a half years of data from 2015 through mid-2018 <coughs> was refused. And you're entering in a sale agreement when the real property value isn't known. I know you've done an independent appraisal, and I know the Turnpike Commission is offering 956,000. Uh, Allegheny County assesses the tax value at 996, so it's pretty much in, in line with uh, the assessed value were it in private hands. But everyone in Pennsylvania knows that property value is based also on the gas and mineral rights underneath. Mr. Ratcher worked for the energy company that uh, developed the plan in Penn adjacent to Bel Air uh, to drill under. So certainly he knows uh, the mineral uh, rights and, and who owns them. I'm really shocked that you don't. That's part of the value. Also, the municipality discussed the sale of the property two years ago. It was documented and reached an agreement in principle on the terms with the Turnpike Commission in 2018, but didn't tell the community until 2019. So two years after the discussions took place for the terms of this, which are documented, and more than a year after the agreement in principle, there's no plan to honor the original intent of these private grants and serve the community moving forward. So I like to uh, wrap up by saying there is, thank you, uh, there is a mechanism by which you, if you are still planning on voting for this ordinance on Tuesday, there is a mechanism by which you can entrench the funds, the full funds of the sale of, uh, the sale of Bel Air and the other assets, the other $62,000, into a separate account designated purely for the originally intended use for the community, for the kids. I see some swimmers here today go. I, I used to swim at Bel Air too many years ago. I'm almost 60 now, but that was a long time ago. There is a mechanism that you have. So before next Tuesday, change the ordinance, add to it, and make sure that money is safely escrowed for the specific purpose, whether it's for building a pool at Monroeville Park or whether it is to designate it with full public access to the 3,000 people that buy daily passes each season to private pools. Designate it, protect it, put it in escrow so it can't be touched for any purpose other than the original intent. Thank you. Thank you.
if you could just sign your name. Uh, my name and then, is Paige Weenan. Thank you. And I live in Cottage Lane. Welcome. So, sorry if I'm a little shaky. This is taking like all my courage just to come up here. <laughs> but um, I'm a Bel Air swimmer, like I said when I was here before. But um, Bel Air, like the swim team, the community, it's just like a giant family to everyone. And I don't know if I'm like exaggerating a little bit, but like in a family, if you're losing someone, you know that's gonna be sad. And I know you're not voting on the pool just yet, but like, if you're selling the pool, that means you're taking away the whole family that we have. And you know that you might never contact your family again, and that it's just gonna be sad for you. So it will be hard on me, a bunch of my swim teams, and a, our whole community. Uh, thank you, <laughs> that's all. Your point was very well made. Yes. Perfect. If anyone else would like to address council. I'm uh, Matt Wienand. I'm Paige's father. <laughs> very proud of her. Um, also from Prodigy Lane. Um, just to, uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to attend. Uh, work schedules and whatnot. So this is a good opportunity for me to, to, to first off, you know, kind of put my two cents in. Um, and that being said, I feel like just in following the, you know, the discussions that have been going on. I know we tabled it, and it, it, it miraculously just popped back into the, to the agenda, um, with little information, little more, little than more information than what we had previously. And I think most of us here. Um, that's the question mainly on our mind is what, you know, what are we doing, what are you doing for our community with, with this? I mean, I think meeting after meeting, we're standing up here, we're bringing this to you, we're addressing this situation, but it's, at the same time, I don't feel like we're getting any answers. Um, so, you know, tonight, hopefully, I think that we can, you know, hope, hope to get something out of that. Um, but at the same time, too, you know, I mean, it is, it's about our kids, you know, I mean, I, I see my daughter up here and I see a lot of these kids come up and they're, they're convicted to tell, you, you know, you guys their side of it, you know, it's not an easy thing for them. Um, it's not an easy thing for them to have that potential for loss, you know, and too often I feel like <laughs> it's all about the money, you know, and, and when, when, when we're talking about budgets and we're talking about budget cuts, it seems like it's the children's programs that, that we lose out on the quickest or the easiest to cut. Um, I hope that's not the case, you know, when you guys sit and have your, your meeting. Um, but, you know, I mean, as, as, as your constituency, we look to you guys to represent us, not represent your own agendas or represent a financial agenda solely. I mean, I get it, right? You know, I mean, we, we have a financial, uh, you know, agenda that we have to maintain to, to, to stay afloat as a, as a community. But, at the same time, I mean, there's got to be other opportunities, other other ways that we can find these funds, or, uh, as Ms. Spann said, find find these funds to at least keep with our community programs. Um, I would hate, you know, and, and again, not having the answers, we don't know where this money's going. I would like to kind of get some, some closure onto what the potential is for this. If if the sale is is you know. Is, is impending and there's nothing we can do about it we at least want to know what the what, what you know what the outcome or, or the planning is that's that's my two cents thank you thank you Uh, evening, Mr. Mayor, um, members of council. Um, my name is Brian Susco. You, um, Brian. Sorry, Turnpike no Gardens. Um, so, uh, so I think, uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of disagree um, with the, the previous speaker. So I think we do have the answers, and the problem is we're not hearing them from you, and really what it leads to is just speculation. So when we look at um, the previous meeting, um, when I asked, all we're asking for is what the plan is. Nobody said a word. 
and you voted to put it back on the agenda and we all left. Like nobody said a word. And we're just asking for the answers. We're just saying, what are we going to do with the poll money, with the poll itself? And I don't think that's an unreasonable question as the citizens of Monrovo. So the reason I disagree is, um, now I know the 2020 budget hasn't been released yet, but the proposed budget, the million dollars for the road construction went from one million to one million nine. So we're selling the pool for a little over $900,000. So I think the answer that you're giving us is we're spending the money and we're putting it into road construction. So if that's not the case, we want to hear it because that's the things that we are seeing and that's what we have to figure out. And if it's the best thing that we want to come up with as the uh, Council of Monroeville is to take this money and we don't want to replace the pool and we want to do the road construction, say it. We're just asking the questions and silence is unacceptable. We're, being, we're having adult conversations as citizens of Monroeville to the Council of what are we doing? Then we kind of come to the uh, committee that the council has created to look into different, uh, Mr. Poach, you're, you're kind of running it, and this is all due respect, I truly, truly believe that, but the uh, survey that was produced by four members of council over a month, it was silly. I mean, it was five questions that really didn't mean anything. There was nothing, you know, substantial that could have come out of that survey. So I think it was a big waste of the council's time, to be perfectly honest with you. And I truly mean that with all due respect. It's just the way we take it is we get a survey with five questions on it about do you like hot food or not, and that has absolutely nothing to do with what we're going to do with this pool. So I just, I just urge you to answer some questions that we have, because if it doesn't come from you, the only thing we can do is read into it and get the answers ourselves. Math doesn't lie. It looks like we're spending the money. Say it. Just, we're asking the question, please answer the question, and that's all we're asking. Thank you for your time. Everyone's going over here. <clears throat> Lois Drum Heller, Monroeville. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Um, there have been some um, questions that uh, have been asked. I will try not to be repetitive on those things, but I will reiterate. Um, transparency has been an issue all along here. Uh, as early as the earliest part of 2018, there was every reason to be transparent with the public on the proposed uh, turnpike, uh, which we, we had some kind of a map that indicated what the widening of the turnpike would entail. It was dated November the 12th, uh, 2015. Is that the most current from the turnpike? Ron, you'd know that answer. Most of you address me. And we'll you're done if now. it is, then it's confusing, and this is, and this is uh, just one of the problems. The other problem was, because this process went on from early 2018 throughout the middle of this year, uh, why didn't people know? I'm hearing everybody ask the question. It, it really wouldn't have mattered because to be out uh, in the public in the sunshine uh, would be the way to handle this. Uh, the whole idea that as you read the, uh, the RTK was 97 pages and as I took my notes and went down there a story unfolds and as I did my homework looking at this there were uh, executive sessions and there were directives and there were signatures on things that told the turnpike what to do. Normally that takes, uh, well always, that takes the councils uh, directing the manager. And if the council did direct the manager, then that means the council made decisions in executive session, which is a violation of the Sunshine Act. So that's number one with me. You should be in the sunshine about the entire process because everybody is an adult and, and even the, the non-adults are very adults about this. The other thing is I haven't had a chance even to get a draft copy. I asked tonight, Mr. <coughs> Harvey, Mr. Little, I asked Mr. Little uh, by email, is there any way to look at the draft ordinance? You know, one of the things that you do when you go through the uh, Times Express of 1970s through 80s through 90s is you see a lot. You, of course, see a lot more content, but you see a lot of the stuff, including the ordinances, including what you're going to be voting on. And so to have seen a uh, draft would have given me a little bit more information. For instance, in, in setting up this ordinance, 
and I know you're not going to answer this now, and I really expect you to answer this before the meeting is done, and that is whether or not you set up any, as a provision of this ordinance, an uh, escrow agent with an escrow account so that the proceeds coming from the sale to the turnpike of Bel Air Pool would be set aside, setting it up, just like it's been done in the past. Now, what I heard last month, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, was that there was going to be a line item that was going to be set aside in the budget. Now, anybody who's done a budget, and I have, knows that line items come and line items go. And line items do not promise you anything. What does is an escrow account and designated areas such as Gateway Heights, such as Haymaker Swim Club, such as Park Swim Club, such as Garden City Swim Club, and actually have those designated uh, proceeds go and even develop criteria. If you want people to have a one-time payment from the proceeds, then you say, you know, a percentage of your, your admission should be offering daily passes. In other words, try to act like the community pools when the bailer or pool is gone. I'm asking whether that, dra that draft is going to have an escrow, it, because if it doesn't have this set aside, such as we did when, when, when we sold the land to the uh, a water authority, and there was this windfall, and they set it aside for the public park, and when OPEB, uh, $6 million was set aside, that was done, and that wasn't touched because it was an escrow. Same thing here. If you are a serious council, you will put that in escrow. And that is the rest of my comment, because my five minutes is up. Thank you very much. Does anyone else would like to address council? Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, Julio Estramera, Alpine Village. And I just have a few questions with regards to the committee that's working on a uh, solution, an alternative for uh, Bell Air Pool. So I guess my question is, can we get an update on the work that's being done by the committee? Um, if not here tonight, when and where can we uh, be provided this update? Um, throughout the work of this committee, um, have any organizations been contacted to, <coughs> to inquire about any potential grants or scholarships that can supplement or assist with the cost of perhaps relocating our community pool? <coughs> which, which organizations, you know, for example, the SCAFE Foundation was mentioned, um, you know, as the originator and assisting, you know, with, with Bel Air Pool, which, which organizations has this committee contacted to uh, inquire about these potential grants or scholarships? Um, I hope we can have the answer to that. Um, I'm also hoping that uh, prior to uh, the meeting on Tuesday that perhaps some type of report is generated, and I don't know if that's something that um, is going to be passed out to council members perhaps right before an executive session before you vote on this. Um, is that something that the committee plans on doing is to provide each council member, um, and I don't know if it can be provided to the public as well, but, um, you know, something that reads here's what's happening and before you vote please read this because this is what the committee has done and this is what we feel is a good solution a good plan <coughs> um, is that something that's going to happen prior <coughs> to everyone just voting on Tuesday and saying hey let's proceed with the sale is there going to be something that you can reference something that you can share with the public before you make I hope what is a an informed decision and not just hey we need to sell this pool and get this money um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Malia Clemens. I am a swimmer from the Bel Air swim team. And I agree like 100% with my friend Paige. Um, I haven't been a part of the swim team for nearly as long as she has, but I have like really gotten to know the swim team like as a family, and like we're just so close. Um, and like taking that away would be like something that's like like it's 
so hard to deal with that. Um, and like the pool, I have summer camp there and I, w I love to go there almost every day in the summer. I try to swim like whenever I can and it's just so much fun for me to be in a community where I know I'm safe, I'm like happy, and I'm with the people that I feel the most comfortable with. And um, the swim team, they're great. We have moved up the division because of practice, because um, we have known each other for so long. And, um, just taking that away, it'd be like so hard. So, thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council? Um, hi, my name is Carol Poli, one three six Kelly Court, Monroeville. Um, as a member of 24 year member of the Mer Monroeville Community Poll, I'm asking the council please consider not voting to sell the poll. Um, if that's not going to happen, I think that everybody here would like council to guarantee that the proceeds from the fund would be earmarked to go back into the Parks and Recreation Department to go towards building a new community pool. Um, a new pool doesn't have to be state of the art with the, you know, the biggest and the best of everything, but rather a simple facility where residents can go. Bel Air certainly is nothing fancy, but we love that pool. We love, it's the people that make that pool. It's not the building itself. So we don't need to spend millions of dollars. You know, if we could get something basic, but for the community, I think that's what we would all like. Um, I've reached out to Representative Markozik whose office assured me that if the municipality would apply for a grant, their office would advocate um, at the state level for a grant for the poll. Um, I also reached out to Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman's office, who gave me two places where the municipality can apply for grants, one being the DCNR's Bureau of Recreation and Conservation, where funding is available to assist communities with planning for public parks and recreation. Examples of projects can include um, pool feasibility studies. Um, this bureau gave a grant of $605,000 $605, to the borough of Dormont for phases of restoration, renovation, and repair work to their pool when they needed money. Another program available is the Municipal Assistance Program, which can offer grants for up to 50% of eligible costs associated with a project. Um, in addition, you know, possibly we could ask for corporate sponsors to help fund a new pool. Um, UPMC is a tax exempt entity, so they don't pay taxes here in Monroeville, real estate taxes like all of us do. Um, and maybe Forbes, those are possible sponsors that, you know, could maybe pitch in money as well. Um, I think we should have a committee that's maybe made up of both council members and citizens to work together to find a solution to this issue. Having a community pool is a definite asset to Monroeville. I think we should all work together to try to make that a reality. Thank you. Does anyone else like to address council? you sign in if you could just state your name hello my name is Lena Anderson I have been for the in the Bel Air community pool for around 10 to 11 years now um, I started when I was really young obviously and I would just like to say that I've seen thousands of people come in Bel Air from since the beginning to the end and everyone loves this pool we all love it so much even when we are complaining that something bad happened or that we lost a meet we still want to be there Everyone gets a pool pass if they can. Everyone loves to come down and see each other. It's a group hangout spot for all of my friends and their friends and their friends. And every single member joins in for the community. We have on the week, on Fridays usually, we have Arts and Crafts Day, which my 
mother holds and we will all usually make something and hang it up on the walls and our names will be everywhere and it's just a nice place to have. It's a family, it's a home where I can go to when I'm just too stressed from school. I can move, go to Bel Air, calm down. It's some place I can go when I want to work out, just get some tension away. It's a place for kids to be kids because there's a play pet, there's a swing set and there's jungle gyms and there's everything in the back. There's the beaches for the older kids to play volleyball. There's the deep end for the daring kids that are willing to go down to 12 feet. There's the shallow end for the adults that just want to relax. Everything in Bel Air has a place and everything in Bel Air is worth every single moment that was ever spent there. Thank you. I'll leave the floor open if anyone else would like to address council. I'm a, a parent of a swimmer, Malia, and also um, an employee of Gateway School District. I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, just hearing the kids and caring so much about what they're passionate about and what the gate, what is offered for the Gateway students, and considering that you're going to take it away is just heart wrenching. You hear the kids shaking, their voices are shaking, and you know this is something that is important to them. It's important to me. It's important to the community. And just please don't take it away. Thank you. Hi, my name's Diane Echegari. I'm a member of the community here in Monroeville and um, I'd just like to reiterate the fact that I think we were kept in the dark too long on this I felt like the old mushroom joke so it, I think we should have heard more about it I've come to a couple of these meetings one was tabled to another time but um, and I live in the Garden City area so we have a pool there in Garden City that my kids attended to but I've been to several sw swim meets there I have grandchildren who have uh, belong there and swim in the swim club and it not only is it just the pool it's the whole area around there that's a beautiful area if you sit there and look there are gigantic oak trees on the other side over there who knows how old they've been or anything you know how old they are and what makes me think of that is i live on evergreen drive where now that seven acres was taken over for those apartment buildings which is a wasteland of clay right now it's very ugly my front porch i can't hear what's going on that area that if it was sold out and not used for by the Monroeville area for anything, those trees would be wiped out. That whole area, which is very nice, would be wiped out. It's just, you know, it's not, um, it's not good. Monroeville isn't thinking green enough these days. I, I'm not really a tree hugger, but I don't think that Monroeville is thinking green enough. They're thinking green in the monetary way, but not in the ecological way. <laughs> And, and also, I thought about this at other times I was here. Did any uh, anyone even ask the turnpike if they could reconfigure that section of road so that it would bypass more to the left if you're heading east on that? No one has ever addressed that in any of these meetings that I've been to. It may have been, and I just didn't know it. But thank you, everyone. Good night. Would anyone else like to address council? You did one shot, sorry, Bob. Tuesday. Uh, my name is Brody Bernardi from uh, Regal Court. And uh, I didn't even really intend on speaking tonight. I was going to wait until Tuesday, but. Um, there's a theme tonight, and, and transparency seems to be um, what I'm hearing from a lot of people. There's, there's ways to replace what you're taking away. There's ways to, like, like the one 
woman said, this doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal. It doesn't have to be a $6 million facility. We compete with Cranberry on a certain level because of the way we built up and the way they're building up. But we don't have to have a facility like theirs. We just need a pool to replace the pool you're taking away. We need a park to take replace the park you're taking away. You re replace, you take away a park and a pool and you pave a road. What are you going to do next year when you need to pay a road, pave a road? Are you going to take away another park? Are you going to evict Garden City and take their land and sell it? Paving roads has to be something in your yearly budget that's sustainable. And selling off assets and using the proceeds to pave roads is, is not going to work. Um, I've been thinking about the pool situation in Monroeville probably longer than you guys have been on council. Maybe not all of you who have been around for a long time. But without, without asking around the people who are in the middle of planning for all these children's activities in the water, I think you might miss the boat. There's, there's ways to build a pool that's affordable that is situated in a way that can make money. If you build a pool that's too shallow to dive, you can't host meets and you can't earn revenue from it. These can be money makers that also serve the purpose of the needs of the community. Um, we aren't running into the hiccup that I thought we would with the public pool, with the uh, local pools, but they don't want to be a public pool. They don't have the infrastructure to be a public pool. They don't have the handicapped accessibility of the parking. They are self-sustaining, and they will be self-sustaining if we replace the pool. They have been the whole time Bel Air's been open. Why would they lose their business and lose their customers if we open another pool that replaces the one that we have? If anything, it would reinvigorate swimming in the community, and people who don't want to go to a public pool would have the choice to go to the four remaining public pools or private pools that are available. It, you don't have to lose this funding. You don't have this is a as a gift to you from the Turnpike if you sell. Using this money to pave a road is it's just a mistake. Ask around, ask for help. Um, it's what I do every day. I was up at Gateway about an hour or two ago, taking lane lines out. It's just what I do. I go and help Marlins and I help Barracudas. I'd help you guys. Just ask. Anyone here would help you. They're in the water all the time. They're <clears throat> planning with these teams all the time. They have answers for you. If you want to know how to replace it and have it be successful, just ask. Put some people on some of your committees. We're not trying to stop what's going to have to happen if it has to happen. But if it has to happen, replace what you're taking away. Thank you. Is there anyone else like to address council before we close this part of the meeting? Seeing that we're gonna close this portion of the meeting, our comment period, move over to our agenda setting meeting. A couple of the things that were mentioned, <clears throat> and really out of, the, out of the gate, what I mentioned, because the money was brought up multiple times. Um, and, I'm, and we actually mentioned this several months ago when we first brought this item up, or this item was brought up publicly. The money is not earmarked for anything. Uh, when you know, keeps the, the, uh, the sound bite is that we're paving a road with it. That is absolutely not true. Uh, for one thing, the money is not here. Council has not decided if they're going to sell this pool or not. As far as it being budgeted, any monies that are budgeted in our current budget was budgeted last year, and any budget money from next year proposed, this would not factor into it. Um, I personally, now this would be council's decision, I am current, you know, personally in favor, and I did mention this publicly before, to earmark this money for a something for the community, particularly in the Parks and Recreation Department, um, but we are not there yet at all. So as far as money being spent, uh, it's not because it's not even voted on at this point. Now that'd be, now I will advocate for that for council to discuss these things. If indeed this vote does go in the affirmative on Tuesday, the next step would be to talk about what the next step is with the, the money. And I will advocate for that publicly and that'll all be put out there forthright. But by no means is this money, or is there a, a grab of money to try to sell the pool in order to pave roads or to balance the budget in any way whatsoever. So I want to really put that out there. As far as the progress of the committee, the committee has met with the private pools. 
Uh, we had a very productive meeting. We have another meeting that is scheduled as well. We've also met with uh, the, the JCC off of Rosecrest. We've met with them several times over the past uh, you know, several months about potentially helping out as well. And the committee is committed to, if indeed this sale would go through, the ordinance would go through, to replace the programming, replace the asset, try to do as best we can to replace what is lost, if indeed it is voted on. So those are the main things. But another meeting is going to be scheduled, and I think it is fair for the community to have more of a report prior to Tuesday's vote. And we will try to get more information for everybody before that vote happens on Tuesday. Mayor, can I ask a question on... Uh, oh, Mr. Duncan. I also ahead. mentioned um, months ago that I'd like to see that money kept in the parks. Is it possible uh, to put that in as in part of the um, ordinance? Yes. yes. I mean, I don't, I'm not really Record. familiar. Yeah, you can have whatever you want in the ordinance. It's totally up to council. And council could do that before the meeting. You know, we could do that before prior the to meeting the meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, you'd have to re-advertise. No, you could you could add, you could add to an ordinance. I mean, I don't yeah, see anything don't wrong with that doing that. I'm in favor of keeping it in the parks. I'm in favor of uh, <coughs> a, a new park. I mean, a new poll. And I've asked for those figures, and I did receive some that were kind of high. But and that can be discussed more. But to clarify your point, though, yes, yes, if council decided to do something along those lines, they could decide to do that prior to Tuesday's vote. They could do it right before voting, during the motion and the second, there could be a, a motion to amend. to amend that ordinance. So that is a possibility before Tuesday, or even on Tuesday, actually. Anything else, Mr. Duncan? That's all. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I can help a little bit with that, too, Mr. as Poch, well. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, the, the mayor and, and uh, Mr. Harvey and I have been, you know, working with folks to, to move through this problem, the process of discussing the aquatics program, if, for lack of a better term, across Monroeville. Didn't have a name for it, chose that at this time for right now. Um, in the context of issues in terms of the surveys and information that went to the members of the Bel Air Pool, um, it fits in the context of asking the, the other meetings that we've had with the individuals the, the, of the community pools. Uh, very, two simple questions in asking, you know, what we talked about simple enough. We asked them, you know, what, how were their organizations, what did they refer to them as, what was their status uh, to do that, and is there any willingness to open up to other programs that might have? Those are the only two questions we asked, and we spent about three hours listening most of the time. And I think very you know, cooperative, you know, uh, folks were really good about, you know, explaining this is what we are, this is where we stand, we can do these things, we can't do these things as well. And just, you know, took notes on that information to put it, to put it together. Um, we were asked, I think Mr. Stamer asked uh, before, you know, about laying out that plan. That's not an unreasonable request, you know, to do that, but it's also do some due diligence. So that is ongoing, and that's not an unfair request to do that in terms of the programs offered at Bel Air. We'll pull those together for you to do that as well. Uh, you know, a summary of it up to this point, that's, that's possible. It's not a problem to do it. So, well, no, not, no actually not. So, um, Moving forward uh, to do that, I don't think that there's anything that's unreasonable that anyone has asked or anything anyone has said here. Um, and also in the context of how people feel about it, I think we kind of know. We didn't have to ask a survey on, on you know, <coughs> things that folks need, what's important to them. What was the very first question on the survey for those that got it is, what was the single most important, what was the value of the swim team? Off the charts for everyone as well. We understand that. Very, very clear that's in place to it too. As, as we're moving forward to. So try to summarize that. That's not unreasonable. And uh, we'll keep working. I think that's the most important thing. Thank you. Very good. And then a uh, couple of questions. Uh, Mr. Williams, you brought up. Well, that's going to be, we'll discuss that whenever we get to your, uh, that ordinance or that, it's an ordinance or resolution? Ordinance. When we get to that ordinance, we'll discuss all that. So thank you. And then as far as the, uh, Mr. Mintz, the oil and gas ordinance, correct. There has not been any, any action on it at this point. I think it's fair to you for me to get you some direction here in the very near future. So I'm going to do my best to get you some direction on that. So we've been occupied, certainly, with this current matter. And that's all I have right now at the, at the start. I mean, you know, we do have reports at the end for council and the manager and, and the solicitor at the end of this meeting as well. But once again, there will be, you know, a, a thank, I want to thank everyone for coming out. 
really good points were made, really good suggestions were made. We appreciate your passion over this, and uh, it does not fall on deaf ears by any means. I mean, these are difficult decisions, and, and this council, you know, we, we try to we make these decisions with the best information possible and uh, looking at every angle. I have asked a question that wasn't answered. The, we're going to move on with our meeting. I can talk to you afterwards. Uh, I'd rather it be answered in public. So the, what we're going to do is... We're, we're not going to do it handled this way. I'd be happy to speak with you afterwards, and I'd also be happy to speak at the council meeting during the comment period as well, but we're not going to go back and forth during, during a meeting from the audience. Not how we, that's not how I run a meeting. Hang on. That's not how we're doing so, it. So this evening, we're going to move on, please. I'm going to respectfully ask you, please. Mayor, I, no, I, I have a just, question, sir. You have a question, Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I thought we already have an ordinance in place for... Uh, the, uh, the drilling and so forth. Well, we do, we do have an ordinance, but I want to address what Mr. Mintz was speaking to, the, the ordinance that the proposed, they, they drafted an ordinance and they presented it to Mr. Oh. Little, so I just want to get some clarification on that, and we'll do that before Tuesday. Okay, but I thought we already had an ordinance. We do have, a, yes, we did, we do have a oil and gas ordinance, uh, this council, restricted uh, gas development to the M2 industrial zone, and that was a, uh, a move that was supported by the community. Um, so there are protections in place, and those fall in line with Act 47 from the okay. Pennsylvania. Thank you. From the Commonwealth law, so thank you. We have an executive session announcement. Council conducted an executive session for personnel and litigation reasons prior to Citizens Night Thursday, October 3rd, 2019, beginning at 6.30 p.m., until 7 p.m., council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the October 8th council meeting. Council, we have in front of you the minutes of the Citizens' Night meeting of September 5th, 2019, the council work session of September 5th, 2019, and the regular council meeting of September 10th, 2019. Any comments, additions, corrections? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Council, the reports of the tax collections. Any comments? No, sir. No, sir. Very good. List of bills and budget transfers. Any questions? We'll start with you, Mrs. Gatos. Anything this evening? No, sir. Mr. Poach? No, sir. Mr. Harvey? None. Mr. Johns? No, sir. Mr. Ersinko? None. Mr. Duncan? I have nothing. Mr. Wilson? Nothing? No, sir. Thank you. And payroll report. Any comments or questions? Council? No, sir. No, no sir. We will discuss and, and look at vacancies, boards, and commissions on Tuesday, and we're going to move over now to our consent agenda. We have one motion this evening. Mr. Lee, <coughs> please. Okay, the first is a motion. Uh, this was tabled at last month's meeting. It's a motion to renew the Turtle Creek Valley Council of Government lease uh, Tuesday evening. This is put under resolutions uh, because 10 years ago it was passed under resolution. This is a renewal of their 10-year lease. It's uh, for five years with an option to renew for another five years. So a council would have to untable that motion there, but it w that motion, and it's, it's under the resolutions number one, which is uh, under resolutions item B. And that under resolutions, if mayor, if I can continue with that. Go ahead, Mr. Did anyone have any, qu no one has any questions about that? Any questions about that, council? Very good, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Little. We have okay, two, two resolutions this evening. Yeah, the first resolution is a resolution, as I said, to renew a five years with an option for another five years for the office space <coughs> in the Neroville Municipal Building with the Turtle Creek Valley Council of Governments. Uh, and the second resolution is authorizing the distribution of 2019 General Municipal Pension System A pursuant to the Municipal Pension Plan Act 205 of 1984. And that's it for the resolutions. Thank you. Any comments or questions, Council? Ordinances that we are considering on Tuesday, we have five. Mr. Ratcher, if you would, please. First one is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville approving a multi-stop sign intersection on Horizon Drive at Bryan Court. <coughs> this is over, I believe, in Haymaker, is it Ridge? Ma Haymaker Point. Haymaker Point, okay. And this has been uh, subject to the engineering department study. They reviewed it, the study has come back and indicated that a stop sign is warranted. Very good. Any questions? Very good. Go Next on. ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville <coughs> establishing a handicapped parking only zone on Shady Ridge Drive in front of 370 Shady Ridge Drive. No 
all requirements were met, so we're, we're, we're good, good with that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ratchery. Go on. Next ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville granting an easement over municipal parcel number 1108C223 to Ross J. Magro and Leanne Bartolomucci for the purpose of granting access over said parcel to parcel number 1107P007. And to translate in that into English, um, the uh, uh, Magro and Bartolomusi live on Abers Creek Road, and they had a an access to their property from Abers Creek Road with a bridge. I believe with a bridge. Yes. Correct. It was wiped out by the recent flooding. Correct. There's a vacant piece of municipal property that I think comes in off of uh, uh, oh, Alpine fine. Village Drive. Correct. And it's municipal property. It's not used for any purpose, and the idea is is to give these property owners. Um, an easement so they can get vehicular access to their property and also uh, public safety if somebody has to get there with a fire truck and ambulance, whatever. Very good. Any comments, council? No, sir. Next. Next ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville amending ordinance number 2329 to eliminate imprisonment as a penalty for non-payment of business taxes mm -hmm. or other violations of the provisions of ordinance 2329. In, uh, this is an ordinance that's really born out of the attempt to collect taxes, uh, overdue taxes for the municipality. And here's the situation that's faced. Um, somebody doesn't pay their business privilege taxes. So if you cite them under the criminal statute, it is near impossible that anybody would ever be sentenced to a jail term for business privilege taxes. I know people go to jail for not paying their income taxes, both on the state and federal level but it just doesn't happen with business privilege taxes. So right now that criminal process is very cumbersome in terms of the municipality's ability to collect these delinquent taxes. And removing this penalty enables us to, uh, to collect those taxes through a civil process, which is much, much easier, okay. quicker. It really gets the municipality in a position where they have an opportunity to collect these taxes much, much, uh, much more quickly. The, the criminal process can take a couple of years, and as I said, so. Nobody, un well, whether you think it's unfortunate or not, nobody goes to jail for not paying their business privilege tax. So the idea is to streamline the collection, uh, which we feel will benefit the municipality. We are giving up that criminal sanction, um, but we think it's worth it given uh, the opportunity to recover the monies much more quickly under the civil process. Understood. Makes sense. It makes sense, Council. Any questions? I'm guessing we've never put anyone in jail. Oh, God, no. So, <laughs> really, it only makes sense to do this. Right. Yeah. Remember, right. that's not the taxes. That's the business privilege tax. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 It's a, we, there are other penalties for real estate taxes, which you also cannot imprison people for. Yeah. And we, we were able to collect those taxes as well. Okay. So. Got it. Final ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing should be the municipality, to enter into an agreement to sell 10.42 acres of municipal property known as Bel Air Swimming Pool to the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission for the purpose of widening the Pennsylvania Turnpike in Monroeville. And then one comment, I think there was a, there was a question about the, ordin or the actual ordinance being viewable. Absolutely it is. We, can, we have copies of it at the municipal building, right, Mr. Little? Correct. Of, of all the ordinances, so if someone wants to read the actual proposed ordinance, there are copies available. Are they in the website, Ted? Sure, the swimming pool, sure. That is something that we can put online. I think that's a good suggestion. Um, any other comments, council? And if this is, this will be considered on Tuesday and uh, there hopes to be, there, there's a hope to be, have more information prior to a Tuesday vote. Well, just, just so I'm a little clear on this. So we need to revise the ordinance on Tuesday, is that correct? Correct. So that so if you want to propose an amendment, Steve, to add okay. that to the ordinance, you just make a, make a motion to amend the ordinance, adding that particular aspect of it. And then it would be considered by council the amendment. And if the, if the amendment passes, then obviously any consideration of the ordinance would be subject to that amendment. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments, council? And those are our ordinances for this evening. We go on to our reports of municipal staff. Do you have anything else, Mr. Nothing Ratchet? else. Okay, thank you. Mr. Little. 
Yeah, uh, as a reminder, as, as Council uh, knows and uh, partial public probably knows, is the uh, 2020 budget will be presented uh, under the Home Rule Charter for me to Council uh, Tuesday uh, under my report. And uh, as, a, as a mention on that, there, there isn't any money budgeted in there for the sale of the swimming pool. Um, just so everybody knows that now, I, I could not, for obvious reasons, the ordinance has not been passed, and we begin the budget process in early August. So there, there isn't anything in there that is earmarked for roads or earmarked for anything. Uh, it just isn't in the budget. Uh, that's a comment on, on that. Okay, item number two is ECSNR. They, uh, we began the hazardous waste and electronic uh, waste collection um, curb to, uh, uh, curb, you can go onto our website and you can get hazardous and electronic waste picked up at your curbside. Uh, but also on Saturday, October the 5th, which is this Saturday at the Public Works from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can also have hazardous and electronic waste also picked up. And also I want to uh, answer two questions that I believe it's probably in my purview uh, from the comments here from the people in the public. Um, Barbara Spann, uh, you mentioned that uh, that the municipality, and if I'm incorrect, I apologize, you mentioned that the municipality reached an agreement with the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission in 2018. That is, that is incorrect. Um, there's no agreement that's been reached with the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. The only agreement that would be reached would be if it was voted on in the affirmative on this Tuesday. Now, the other comment I want to make is a question, I think her name was, um, uh, Diane, I, I don't know Diane's last name, and we had this question also last month, is that, that why didn't the turnpike look on the north, uh, northeast side um, and, and make it um, look for the property on the other side instead of the property where the swimming pool is? Well, I contacted the project manager, manager for the turnpike, and there are various reasons why they did not do that. Two of which they're, that are most glaring is there's a floodplain over in that area, okay? And they could not disturb that, the floodplain. It would be much more expensive to, do, to disturb the floodplain. The other is the uh, Franklin Township Water Authority is over there and the acquisition of the property uh, near that facility would just have been problematic. Those are the two uh, glaring uh, examples of why they could not, they did look at that area over there, uh, but why they did not. Other minor, well this is, in, this is kind of like uh, in subcategory B, is if they did it over there it would not be symmetrically widened. Um, so, you know, just from an engineering perspective they could not do it on a symmetrical end. The right-of-way acquisition on that side of the turnpike was w much more expensive than on our side. Um, and also from an uh, engineering and a construction standpoint, uh, there is a uh, large uh, rock outcropping um, that is uh, to be, it's on the north side of Abers Creek. That presented an engineering problem. Also, the trail bridge had to be rerouted. That is, that's probably uh, more of a, uh, a significant matter also. So those are the reasons why the Turnpike Commission told me uh, why they did look at that area. They did, but uh, they discounted it for those reasons. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Hugus, anything this evening? I do have one thing. Uh, last month, Mr. Harvey asked if we could do a traffic and engineering study for Logan's Ferry Road at Skyview. And therefore, after there was, I got a request from the Glenwood Homeowners Association to um, have a traffic study done at two separate locations within the Glenwood plan, which I was going to combine into doing it all at the same time for ease. And that was uh, Glenwood Drive at Old William Penn Highway and um, A Hill also. So I was going to put those together into one traffic study. Very good. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Hugus? I'm sorry. Anything else? That is it. Okay. Ms. Rock. I do not have anything right. other than I'm hard at work on the budget. We all know that. Yes, you are. Yay. <laughs> okay. 
Absolutely. Moving over to our reports of council members. Mr. Wilson, anything this evening? Yes, I, I have a couple of things, Mayor. Thank you. I'm wearing pink tonight uh, for uh, breast, breast cancer awareness. And also, <clears throat> I would like to uh, ask all of our retailers in Monroeville that sell vaping tools yeah. to please yeah. stop selling. Your profitability uh, with that, that little item is, that is killing people it is, can't be uh, much to uh, keep your store open. So please stop with the vaping tools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Duncan, anything I, this evening? I have nothing this evening. Mr. Arsenko. Nothing, but for Tuesday I will. Very good. Mr. Johns. Just a couple of quick things at the convention center. October 6th is the Pittsburgh Wedding Flea Market. <clears throat> Excuse me. October 9th is the Westpac's Fall Job Fair. <coughs> October 11th through the 13th is the Meeting of the Marked. I don't have a clue. The Meeting of the what? Marked. M-A-R-K-E-D. I have no idea what the that means. I'm just reading it. Me. October 19th and 20th is the Showmaster's Gun Show. October 24th through the 26th is the Pan Fall Coin Show. And October 28th and 29th is Billy Burke World Outreach. <coughs> With that, sir, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, I only had a couple things, but after the meeting tonight, I, I have to make a couple remarks. The first one is, <coughs> I would like, I don't know if I have to make a motion or what, to take that draft ordinance, gas and drilling ordinance, off the table so we can quit discussing it. Could you imagine if every resident of Monroeville wrote up their own ordinance and brought it up here and expected us to put it on the table? And I'm with you. Go through the legal process of Bob Ratcher reviewing it. And so I just want to take that off the table. The, the drilling ordinance that was submitted, I, I, do I need to make a motion to do such? It was never. Mr. I don't, Ratcher, I don't if you could. <laughs> there's no action been taken on it. It's never been uh, formally adopted. Council's never given any direction. If, if you want to give the direction that four or more of you don't want to do anything with it, then you can certainly give that direction. Much in the same manner you give us direction when I ask if you want me to advertise an ordinance or want the municipality to advertise an oh, ordinance. Let's give it now. Is that something worth memorializing with a motion? Uh, you could do that. That's something we could discuss on Tuesday. Then, yeah, if right, right. Mm -hmm. We could discuss that for Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Uh, Bel Air Funds. <clears throat> Every one of us up here are residents. Sometimes I get the feeling from the residents out there that we have like some kind of private plan in, in mind, and we don't. We're, we're here representing the residents, whether they believe it or not. The one thing I'll agree with is we, we were negligent in bringing this out as fast as we should have. But other than that, uh, the Turnpike and, and what they're offering and what they can do uh, is, has all been put on the table. The assets of the pool, that's yet to be discussed, and I can guarantee that those assets were never taken into consideration in any budget to date, including uh, the paving of roads, which I made the motion to double the budget out of the fund balance, and I didn't even know anything about these uh, funds. So whoever said that's 100% wrong. Uh, the work on the pool committee, I heard some people say they didn't really like the the questionnaire that went out, Mr. Poach is working hard on that. Uh, I'm, I'm really uh, a member of the committee, but Eric and, and, and the mayor are doing all the work, and they are trying to make sure that if that pool goes, that there's other places uh, for the community to uh, enjoy swimming, including the swim teams. So I, you know, I think people have the wrong impression out there, but that's my opinion. And as far as the turnpike meetings that I've attended, there were never any documents or maps given to us. Somebody, Ms. Drumhiller, kind of insinuated that uh, through right to nose and Point of transparency. Wow, do I hate that word sometimes. I, I, you ask me and I'll tell you. And there was never any documents given to us. We went there, we talked. There was other municipal officials there. We looked at their maps. They told us about them. We asked questions. And we try to bring our education back to our community. Uh, I have never received a document or a map. I don't know what anybody's talking about, like it's hidden and 
and we didn't honor the Sunshine Act. I, these weren't voting meetings that we went to. They were meetings that the Turnpike Commission set up so they could educate the, the, the different communities. Oakmont was there, Plum, Monroeville, and, I, and quite frankly, Ward 3 is taking one of the bigger hits on this Turnpike expansion because they have to center destroy road. the Center Road bridge, bridge, put a new Center Road bridge up, then they're going to go to the bridge over Beatty Road by the community college, and they have to destroy that bridge and put a new bridge up. And then I can't wait till they do the one on Old William Penn, which is the little old tunnel, tunnel, because that whole thing's going to have to go, and that's going to take some time. And widening on down. So uh, fire company number four is going to lose a big chunk of their property. And so it, 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 it's an ongoing thing. And the turnpike, if, from going to these meetings, the one thing I learned is Constructing the turnpike is just the little itsy bitsy part of the of the whole project. Getting the land acquisition and and meeting the the, the feds on the uh, stormwater management and things like that. That's that's what they're working on. That's why they have to know they do or don't have this pool property, and do they have to go to court over it? I don't I don't know. I'm not, we haven't had one for a while, but I'm just letting you know that's the kind of stuff they look at. Uh, so that's from this meeting. I want to thank the mayor. Uh, I, I've really been working hard trying to get this uh, Logan's Ferry Road, Woodhaven Drive, uh, floodwater, stormwater meeting going, but something always seems to delay it just a little bit. And uh, I, I want to assure all the residents over there that it is still going to happen. Uh, the engineering department's been working very hard to get the documents and the PowerPoint so everybody understands where, where Monroeville's at what we can do and what we can't do. And uh, I promise you that letter will come out the minute we can, we can <clears throat> successfully answer your questions. Um, I want to say uh, yay to the county and Mr. Arasenko. If any of you have not driven Center Road, it is finally done. Uh, and they did a great job on it. Finally, it's totally paved and painted. And they moved and, to the Saunders. And station. hooray, it's not like the Ho Chi Minh Trail anymore. <laughs> And uh, last but not least, I want to congratulate my daughter, Kim, and her husband, Jason, for the birth of their son, my first grandson, Cole. Yay. He was born on 9, 1919. Won't be hard to remember. <laughs> and uh, so congratulations. And I'm done. Great. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Little, you had something you wanted to mention? Yeah, I, I wanted to follow up with what Councilman Harvey mentioned about um, we possibly didn't get things out. In, in time with respect to the, the swimming pool. Be, be, before I say that, I should have said before my, on my report, if anybody wants to email me or call me, my information's on the website, feel free to. Dave Mintz, as he mentioned about the oil and gas, he called me up on the phone. Call me on the phone, email me, and I can talk to you on the phone. Um, but uh, getting back to the swimming pool, um, uh, Mr. Sedlak's our right to know officer, and we put out as, I don't know if it was Lois or whomever, mentioned we had five right to know act, um, requests with respect to the swimming pool information. And if you go through there, you'll notice it took from January of, of this year to April because we wanted to have a trail coming down from Heritage Park, going along the uh, along Abers Creek, along Saunders Station, hooking up with the uh, Westmoreland Heritage Trail, which we think, thought would be a great idea. Actually, the mayor is the one that pushed that right, right during the holidays last year. That whole process there took four months, all right? So we really could not have done anything, in my opinion, and presented anything to the, to the public until that piece was put together because the Turnpike Commission could have said, no, you can't do that. Now, if they would have said that last January, this council would have rolled this out then. But it took four months from January to April and, and that's all documented in the 97 pages that were put out. I think there was five RTKs. That's all contained within there. So the whole process began, as I, somebody said, in uh, 18, in April of 18, when I was initially contacted by the Turnpike Commission. I had a meeting with the Turnpike Commission on May the 15th of that year, and things progressed from there. You really... You cannot present things to the public until you have all your ducks lined up and you have all your information together. And that was the last piece of getting that trail together. They would permit us to put that trail on there 
if indeed we did sell the property. That alone took four months to do. So, and once April came along, council broached the subject with the public in May. So it was only a month after we had things buttoned up that they that we broached the you know we uh, council broached this with the public. So I really don't believe that anything was being held back. There was, you know, there was no um, everything. I believe was as transparent as it can be. And I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Poach. Great. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, from, uh, you know, Mr. Little and, and what uh, Mr. Harvey had to say as well, um, who they're also very, you're, Ron, you're doing a lot more work than people let on do, to, to, in addition you know. to everything else. And, and I neglected to mention Mr. Little, too, on that uh, piece of the pool committee. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I can accept part of uh, that responsibility for us as a group. Did we get it out fast enough or not? Again, I think... Yeah, Mr. Little kind of explained it some of the some of the process that's ongoing. It's not simple and it isn't easy, and it's not just one uh, you know issue. It's been spreading across those as well. Um, it's not unreasonable to summarize you know our progress up to this point, um, and I will do my best to do that as well and provide that also in writing. Not unreasonable you know to do that. Uh, a, a summary of where that portion stands, with one proviso, and that is is this is continuing to be ongoing. As we mentioned before, we've discussed a number of different things. We've heard an awful lot of things. There's absolutely no question how much the, the, the pool is valued and the things that are important. Very clear to do that. And it's always been about the people. Every single time I've heard, yes, the facility has sentimental value. There's a few people have mentioned that too. The most consistent th theme that I have heard in this process is, you know, it's the people, it's the family, it's our group. And we appreciate that too. So it's trying to make sure that that's a, those opportunities for people to congregate in that family environment is important as well. Um, and I do want to thank the, the other community pools and folks that have met, met with this. They were way more open and honest. I mean, they came extremely prepared to discuss uh, issues and options. And I think they're trying to work together as well, too. Um, so that's a different, uh, you know, context than they have ever worked in the past uh, as well. And we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, as it moves forward. So we've got to get to the next opportunities. We want to be sure that what we have had in terms of programs is what is and what is not replaceable. Swim team capabilities, for example, is that available? Is it in place? I know uh, Mr. Susco asked me about hot food. Believe it or not, it'll come out. It was an issue across there. I, I, I know that seems silly, and that's okay. You can bring that up because out of context, <coughs> that's fine. I, I understand that, you know, and I'll, I'll accept that piece of it. Believe me when I tell you those questions were significant. Um, I appreciate everyone that did respond. Uh, we were at the Parks and Rec Department. We neglected to mention how hard they've worked in terms of getting in contact with people, too. So there's a lot of people trying to work on the capabilities and things that are in, in, in process. The challenge is, you know, there are some timelines that are being met in terms of the, the, if lack of a better term, the real estate acquisition and the real estate portion of this process as the programmatic pro portions of it, too. So we're trying to balance all of those as well. No issue uh, on that, you know, that there's anything not being transparent. I think that's as is, is, we can. You can talk to those folks that we, we've met with and continue to talk to. Uh, that's not a problem, you know, to, to express that. So thank you all, folks, for continuing to do that. We appreciate folks that come here. I know it's very difficult. I applaud those kids that came up here this evening. I know that's very difficult. Public, I think they'll do well further on in life, making the starts now you know, to do that. And uh, we'll keep moving forward, folks. Thank you. Thank Mayor, you. just real quick. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. I just, I just want to tell you that if you come to Tuesday's meeting, you're going to see, and I'm not using this as an excuse. I'm just letting you know that to make you appreciative, there's a $35 million budget about to be presented to you as residents and us. And so there is $35 million worth of stuff out there that we have to take care of every day. And not, this pool is just one of them. And, I, and I'm not trying to back off. I'm not trying to make it run off my back. I'm just saying that, that there is roads to be paved. There's stormwater management. There's sewers. There's parks. There's, you know, the police Capital department, apartments. public safety. And so please don't forget that. that that's all I'm asking. Thank you. Mrs. Gatos. I'm going to just thank all of my...
council members for all the comments made. I think we all feel the same exact way. We, we, uh, we hear you, we hear what you're saying. I appreciate the kids coming up and speaking their minds. That's a difficult thing to do for a grown up even, as we have seen people come up to the podium. Um, we, we do hear what you're saying. Um, we are kind of put in a bad spot at times and we try to do the best that we can, not only for you, for us, but for you as well. And, and you need to understand that, you know, we're here every single month not for just one item. We have to take care of the entire municipality and all of the concerns of all of the residents and do the very, very best that we can with that. It's not our own personal <coughs> agendas, ever. And really, that's my bottom line um, to say to you. And we are trying to do the best we can with every dollar that we have here. And this is not just to take money in, as it's been suggested, that they're, we're grabbing the green and running with it. That's not even close to the truth. So, and do understand 100% this is not for just the roads. No. So, and Mr. I think Mr. Little did a good job as far as the timeline, but prior to that also in the timeline was us asking for more time, us asking for more money, us asking for another appraisal. Those things were all inclusive as well, and that's not something that I would bring to anybody's table without having an answer to it. So anyhow, I would just like to thank everybody for all the time that's been put in and will be put in and all the thought. And please, please understand that we're trying to do the best for everyone. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Gatos. Uh, I'll change gears real quick and because uh, I'm going to start at the top and make sure I get this out there. But I want to wish my wife a happy anniversary tomorrow, 16 years. Uh, hey. Oh, mine was oh, yesterday. Wow. Great. I just want to thank her for saying yes. Oh. And, uh, well, I love her dearly. Get, we have to get her a medal for that. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my husband gets a ring, though. All right. well, your hus <laughs> yeah, your husband. Yeah. Good. All right. And uh, congratulations to Mr. Harvey, to you uh, on the birth of your grandson. Wish uh, your daughter and your son-in-law the best. And thank that's you. that's great. Great news. Uh, and as we, everyone mentioned, I want to thank everyone that's come out this evening, who's come out in the past, who has added input, who has emailed me, called, uh, spoke of uh, this pool issue, and actually on, on, on both sides of the issue, uh, both for and, and against uh, this potential uh, acquisition. Um, but, you know, once again, this input is very uh, valuable to the council, and we appreciate, we appreciate all your input. And I also want to thank the uh, neighborhood pools, even uh, Mr. Bernardi mentioned earlier about, you know, the cooperation of the neighborhood pools. We want to appreciate, you know, we want to thank them for uh, coming to the table and, and adding their input uh, in this matter as well. Uh, I, I have to wish uh, condolences to our former police chief, George Polnar, yes, on the loss of his mom. mother. Yeah. Uh, so uh, really deepest condolences and sympathy to uh, him and his family. And then finally, to our, our residents of the Jewish faith, I just want to uh, wish them all a, a very happy new year, a Lashana Tova, and I uh, wish them a very uh, good holiday next week. So with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you and good night.